Hello, this is Sarah here, and welcome back to another Sound Out Review. Today we're taking a look at the SH Figure Wars Garo Saitamakoga Shinkocho Seho. Now this is a remake of a Garo figure released several years ago based on the original Garo series and the lead protagonist, Saijima Koga. This is done in the Shinkocho Steho style, which has only been used for Kamen Rider so far, and it is a concept of more realistic proportions due to a skeletal core. But it also gives Bandai a chance to go back and redo something they'd done in the past. And redone it they have. The previous Garo figure art was gold painted and had very limited articulation. But... It did have one thing over this one, which is the cape. This figure art doesn't include the cape like the original did, however, I don't see it as an issue, and we'll go into that more as we go further. Now, this figure was a premium Bandai exclusive and was 9,999 yen and had to be pre ordered from Premium Bandai before release. It shipped in June 2018, and I got mine from Okinawa and Toy Seller, my preferred middleman service. That being said, this thing did not cost me 100 bucks like the original list price but a little bit more because of fees and shipping. So what goes all, all goes into a $100 figure arts price? Well, of course, it's detail. And with Garo, it's a very intricate design, very knight-like, very ornate details that are sculpted in and painted into the physical suit itself, into the animation model they used to replace the physical suit when the physical suit couldn't do the work that it needed to do. And the figure art pulls it off beautifully. It looks so much better than every other Garo I've ever seen in my life. And it's better than most figure arts I've ever seen. I honestly can't think of many figure arts that look even close to this good. It's just gorgeous. The shiny gold, the intricately painted things like the Zaraba on the hand, all of the inscribed Makai language throughout the silver parts that are painted black after being molded over. It's absolutely beautiful, which is why I'm afraid to touch it. Uh, it's the one downside to this figure art is that I never want to handle it too heavily because I don't want to smudge or scratch the armor. And that's why I'm carrying it around with cleaning cloths for this review. Normally, I keep this guy in a plastic case to avoid dust and to keep this thing looking good because it is incredible. This is probably one of the scariest figures to own but also at the same time, not too bad. That being said, articulation is fantastic when you do handle the figure. The head has full movement, the shoulders have full movement, the shoulder pads even contract in on themselves to make sure you can have additional range. You have a double jointed elbow in addition to a bicep swivel, plus a fully jointed wrist. So your standard figure articulation. The torso is surprisingly, surprisingly mobile. It can move in all kinds of different directions, sliding armor panels, uh, you also have the legs, which has sliding armor panels. Hip, outward hip movement's a little restricted at times, but double joint knees, full ankle pivots, everything's great. They worked with the design they had and managed to give us the articulation we're used to with SH Figure Arts. He also comes with a variety of hands. Two open hands for more uh, rage poses, two uh, wide grip hands for the sheath, and two closed grips for the sword itself. That is pretty much all you need for Garo. And here is the Garo Ken. The Garo Ken has two different forms. There is the sheathed form here. Now this is represented with the actual sheath with a gold chain, looking at Yukiba, and a uh, handle. Now the handle itself is fully painted, fully detailed, and is there as a placeholder. Instead of having the whole sword go inside the sheath, you can just remove the handle, and now you have an unsheathed sword. Uh, the handle just can go off to the side or plug in whenever you need it. Uh, you can hold it really well with those open grip hands. They're fit perfectly to fit around the sheath, but they're not too tight to where I feel like the black or the gold may rub off on each other, which is a very, very good thing. Garo's sword is a very iconic part of his look, and he's never without it. And so having it where it holds in so, sta uh, so sturdy and keeping it really solid is very important for a Garo figure. And this figure pulls it off, like I said, perfectly. And I think that's kind of the underlining tone of this figure. Taking a look at the Garo sword itself outside of the sheath. This is the separate piece. It's wonderfully painted. Every little detail is there. Every little detail is painted. And he can hold it beautifully. And he can pull off his signature pose. This is the iconic pose that Koga uses when he's Garo, when he's not Garo. It is the pose I think of when I think of Saijima Koga. And the fact that he can pull it off is the most important thing about a figure. If a figure can't pull off a character's iconic pose, it's not gonna be able to be a good figure for that regard. 
And this is something that I think the original Garo figure art could not do as well, but this one manages to pull it off thanks to the sliding armor and the more intricate articulation. Overall, SH figure arts, Golden Knight Garo, Saija Makoga, as Shinkocho Seho version, is one of the most beautiful action figures I've ever purchased in my life. This is something that I pre-ordered ahead of time because I knew this would be a hot seller, and so far it is. I would have trouble finding this on the aftermarket now if I hadn't pre-ordered it. But there is hope. There has got to be hope. Because where there is light, shadows lurk and fear reigns. Yet by, yet by the blade of nights, mankind was given hope. And this also gives me hope that Bandai's Etch-Hitch Figure Arts line is going to keep going in this direction. The Gara SH Figure Arts line is going to continue next with Shinkocho Seho Silver Knight Zero who is, of course, the buddy to Garo. They're the two that always go together. They were the two figures released for the original series, and we've never gotten beyond Zero, but I'm really hoping we do. There's so many beautiful Makai Knight designs that haven't been realized in SH Figure Arts. They've only ever been released as Makai Kado, and that's a more SIC style on a different scale. I would love to see Kiba and Dan. I would love to see ones from later series, such as Lord, such as the Ryuga timeline characters, maybe even some of the Garo anime characters done in this more impressive, very important style. And as long as they don't come out too much, too too quickly, I will be able to afford them all. Uh, this was a very expensive figure, but I feel like it was worth every single penny. So that does it for this review. Uh, please stay tuned, hit subscribe, ring that notification bell, and stay tuned for more reviews, more tokusatsu, more... Gundam reviews every Monday, and more Garo reviews, especially when Silver Knight Zero comes in. I'm very much looking forward to seeing more Garo merchandise in our future, and I hope that I can bring more reviews to all of you. So until next time, this is Sanat saying, goodbye.